Afternoon all. I'm with my good friend Paul Georgiou here today. Hi Paul. Uh, hi Trev. And we're now going to do the long-awaited uh, video on the French exchange. Yes, uh, a very exciting <laughs> variation of the French defence. No, no, just kidding. Oh, it has actually got some interest value. But uh, Paul, you did well on the weekend, didn't you? You, did, you won a tournament this well, weekend, I, did you? I, I, I won a uh, minor minor quick play. Excellent. Okay, so feeling confident for this video. Okay, so the French defence exchange variation. So the French defence, we've already done one or two videos on, on this channel. Uh, so the French defence E4, E6. So after D4, D5, uh, we have a decision point for white. And one of the main moves is actually the rather obnoxious E takes D5. From If you're playing black and someone plays E takes D5, you're probably thinking, oh no, they want a symmetrical pawn structure or a draw or something. Well, E takes D5 has been most popular played by weaker players against stronger players mm. in order to simplify and get a draw. Yeah. But it can be used actually, and has been used as an attacking weapon as well. Mm. So it actually leaves uh, the position open. You know, what is white up to mm. when he plays e takes d5? Yeah. And the opponent may be uh, unsure. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's play uh, e takes d5. We've got an example illustrative game here. Yes, we're, we're going to look at a, a, a well known. Uh, Shall we look at that now then? Yep, let's look okay, at that I'll now. I'll flip boards. Shall we have from Black's perspective? Okay. So there was a game. What was this game then? Um, well, let's, let's play e takes d5 first. e takes d5. And this is a game uh, between uh, Stefano Tatai and Victor Korchnoi, played Beer Sheep in 1978, quite a well-known uh, game, where White decided to play uh, for a draw against and against uh, world-class GM and uh, didn't uh, get very far. He's a great exponent of the French defence, isn't he? He is, um, Victor Korchnoi. Absolutely great, yeah. So, OK, so... What happened here then? And uh, Tata played bishop d3, which is one of the main moves, and Korchnoi immediately uh, decided to uh, play aggressively with c5. Ah, yes, yes. I've, I've seen on, on one of the uh, chess games come Explorer, this has got good results actually, c5, yes. And th th this, is, this is quite a good idea, but we'll come uh, to exactly why later. But um, anyway, Tata played knight f3, quite reasonable, and Korchnoi played knight c6. And now Tata played possibly a rather dubious move. He played Queen E2 check. Ah. And and the the idea is that uh, after Bishop E7, sorry, Bishop pardon, E7, pardon me, pardon me. he uh, takes on C5, and now Black has a nice state of pawn. Yes. But uh, this doesn't turn out very well for White at all. Uh, Courtney now just plays Knight F6. And Tata, pretty scared of the world class uh, Grand Marty's facing, played h3 to stop bishop g4. Uh -huh. This is all a bit slow. Yes, so he's prevented this pin here. Prevented the pin with bishop g4. Okay. And now, uh, of course, I just castle. And uh, with rookie 8 coming, Tata, I thought he'd better get his uh, king castled as well. So he castled. And now. Black played bishop takes c5, and white strategy has not been a success. Mm. Black black has a very nice position, advantage in development, another tempo gain coming with rookie eight. Yes, this doesn't look too bright for white to do this. It, it, it really shouldn't be as, as bad as, uh, as what actually happens, mm. but it all falls apart very quickly now. So Tatai plays c3, and rookie eight from uh, Korchnoi, mm. and the queen went to c2. And now, uh, Korshno played Queen D6. Ah, there's some cheapos like Queen G3 emerging here. With, with, with a, a certain idea which uh, Tata either underestimated or overlooked. Or oh, there's another forcing moves, yes. I think I've spotted another forcing move, yes. And uh, Knight B D2. Oh dear. And, and uh, well, you're, you're looking at Bishop takes H3. I'm not sure uh, how clear that is. Right. Um, Bishop takes h3, g takes, queen g3 check, king h1. Yeah. Is there more than a draw? It's not entirely clear. But um, he played uh, queen g3. Yeah. Which is actually much stronger. Threatening bishop takes h3. There's a, there's a pin on, the f pawn is pinned, mm. therefore the queen can't be taken, obviously. Mm. And bishop takes h3 is threatened. Mm. So um, there's some uh, real problems here. Yes. And uh, uh, White's probably lost already. I'm not sure what he can do here. Mm. But he played bishop f5, which seems natural. 
defending a VH3 pawn. But now, unfortunately for him, came another hammer blow, rook e2. Rook e2. Just three pieces are now uh, on the f2 uh, pawn. Yeah, yeah. And there's no uh, way to uh, to defend. Wow. That really happened in the tournament, so... This this guy is twenty four fifty five. Blimey, he's not uh, he's not weak, and uh, it's it's all over. So this c five, yeah, it might play maybe just for the isolated queen's pawn, but yeah. neglected king safety. Um, and uh, well, I mean, Korchnoi was the one who accepted the isolated queen's pawn, but yeah. playing c five, yeah, in order to uh, mix the game up. Yeah. Anyway, Tatai tried knight d four, and uh, after knight takes d four, he resigned. Oh, knight takes d4. Oh, it's attacking the queen anyway. Of course it's attacking the queen, so yes. pawn takes queen, knight takes knight queen. Free, knight takes queen, knight takes No, it's just taking the queen, yeah. So after, so he resigns here yeah. because c it, takes... It, see, bishop takes d4. Yeah, it's horrible. And f2 is still going. Yeah. And the queen can't defend because uh, the knight's in the way on d2. Great, blimey. Yes, inspirational stuff in this line. I mean, maybe what I, can, what I can just about get away with uh, ending a couple of pawns down, yeah. possibly, but it's, uh, it's it's lost. Okay. And this is what happens sometimes when White plays the exchange uh, French yes. against a stronger player. So if we go back and look at um, theoretical... He, 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 just, he, just, he just gets uh, demolished. So that was an interesting example. So, uh, so uh, we, 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 can, we can briefly measure after e takes d5. Yeah. Uh, e take, white plays e takes d5. Yeah. We, we can mention uh, the the black move, queen takes d5. Oh, yes. As, as sometimes played by uh, by you, I believe. I, I have played this in the past in bullets. It's a good surprise to to avoid symmet symmetric, uh, uh, symmetrical pawn structure. I think um, people are shocked by it. Yeah. The main problem is it's not very good, as mm. I'm sure you're aware. Yeah. Tempo gains. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like a Scandinavian where Black's uh, just played e6, blocking in his uh, bishop. Yes, yeah. So White should probably just play knight f3, followed by uh, c4 next move, and get his pieces out with a nice space advantage. That's a good point. It is like an inferior kind of Scandinavian without the flexibility of this bishop. I mean, there's, 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 oh, clearly there's no instantly uh, forced win or anything, but... Uh, but the one reason I played this, it does avoid the symmetrical pawn structure, though. That's the one, one benefit, so... Uh, it, it, it does, but... Uh, the problem is it's not very really good. Hmm. That's the main uh, problem with it. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll abandon uh, queen takes d5 and go back to e takes d5, the uh, main uh, move. Yep. And the we'll, white has various uh, options here. Um, a, a dynamic uh, move played by Kasparov and others is uh, c4. c4. This is clearly uh, not playing uh, for a draw. Ah, yes, yes. I, I remember someone mentioning this to me. It's a, it's a very nice Kasparov game in this, yes. Oh, are some. Uh, and, and knight f6 seems uh, like uh, the most normal move. And knight c3. And I'd, I'd say the bishop b4 is possible here, but... Uh, so let's play bishop b4, but uh, I don't really like it. For example, queen b3 looks good after that, hitting the bishop. Right. Pressurising down that diagonal. Yes. Black doesn't really want to give up that bishop. Yeah. And uh, d5 uh, is now uh, potentially loose. I guess, I think black can flick in knight c6 here. Huh? Black, black can play knight c6 and then knight f3. Yeah. Okay. And there, there, there are lots of hairy lines, but this is generally uh, thought to be good for white. So black normally prefers bishop e7, which is more solid. With with queen on d one, so bishop e seven, bishop e seven, and and uh, now play may continue. Uh, knight f three, castles, now uh, bishop e two, and now having lost the tempo, black will probably take on c four, and bishop will recapture, and uh, black has a choice here to play. Uh, Knight c6, uh, or to play uh, c6 and uh, knight d7 to b6. Right. So, so c6, knight d7 to b6, trying to get the isolated queen's pawn blockade. C6 is more so, knight c6 could be pushed away by d5. Right. Um, yeah. Not immediately, then, then uh, some uh, 
later stage. Whereas if c6 and knight bd7, white will have put a knight on e5. Yes. And, and the rook on e1 and bishop g5 and play uh, schisholm. I mean, this is slightly better for white. And, yeah. and uh, white, white has a free game of black is extremely solid, yeah. as you can uh, yeah. see. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, uh, one way of uh, playing it. Yeah. Okay. So it's quite an aggressive move, c4. Yes, I was aware of this. Yes. So this is certainly one way in which white is actually playing for the full point. Uh, but, but the, the most uh, most common move uh, on move four is actually uh, bishop d3. Okay, yes, as in the disastrous caution game. Uh, and uh, this is this this cuts uh, puts the bishop on the best diagonal, and it seems kind of logical. Mm. And of course, caution played. Uh, C five here. Well, actually, question then. So, are we we're going to look at knight f three later, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to look at knight f three later. Why that's not maybe not as good as bishop d three. Okay. So bishop d three, and now uh, actually, I think knight f three is the best move, but I'll explain uh, why. Ah, okay. I think knight f three is stronger than bishop d three. Okay. Um, bishop, and actually, th this leads to um, an interesting uh, point, which uh, I found in my uh, and actually, if um, one player puts a bishop. Uh, on their uh, queen three square, d3 or d6, yes. then it's uh, frequently a good idea for the other player to react by playing c5 or c4. Oh. Which is exactly what uh, Korchnoi did. Uh, yes, because there's also a potential threat of c4, isn't there, as well? Well, that's, that, 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 that's, well, that's, that's, well, that's one uh, possibility. Mm. But I, I think the, the main idea is that the player with the isolated queen's pawn, yeah. um, the, the bishop ends up frequently slightly misplaced on d3. Oh, right. First because it's blocking the attack on yeah, the d-pawn. Sh shielding the z-pawn, yeah. So if you play c5, it's, so there's a great justification for c5, yes. Uh, but also because um, in, in these uh, IQP positions, uh, when the knight goes uh, to bishop 3, king's bishop 3, f3 or f6, yes. um, it's frequently pinned by a uh, bishop, like I say knight 3, bishop g4, when the bishop would rather be on the e2 square. Yes, that's an annoying pin. Uh, so C C five is an interesting here. So are we looking at C five again now? Um, we 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 mentioned it briefly, but I, I just, the, the, just the general idea of, right. of playing C five against Bishop D three. So say Knight F three. Yeah. Is or, Bishop G four playable here though? Or playing C four against Bishop D six. Mm. Uh, Bishop G four playable here. Um, I'm not sure about what would Black play here. Bishop G four looks slightly odd, doesn't it? Yeah. What would you put? Uh, what, what would you play here? Uh, I would just play knight c6, which is what, uh, what Korchnoi played. All right, yeah. And no, I mean, you've got the ideas of taking on, on d4. I mean, there's always a slight possibility that you're going to take on d4 mm. and try and keep the pawn, especially yeah. with the, the bishop on d3 blocking. Yeah. I mean, it's not the general idea, but it is mm. something to be borne in mind. Or yeah. c4 can be played, followed by a queenside uh, push. But you, you can see it. Uh, Bishop come to g4 idea. Yeah. You'd rather the bishop was on e2 here, wouldn't you, in a way? Yeah, yeah. Because then more solid with, with d4. Yeah. So I think c5 is good against bishop d3, and bishop uh, d6, c4 is good against that. So it's a good just general point, I think. Oh, I see. If black, plays, if black plays uh, bishop d6 too early, then c4. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think that's a good Yeah. Point. That's a really good point. Thanks, Paul. So. So c5 is, is one unbalancing uh, move, and yeah. another possibility is uh, knight c6. Ah. When uh, white generally plays uh, c3, if he plays knight e2, then the knight b4 can be annoying. Ooh, yes. It's, it's not that bad, but uh, now we really probably should play bishop b5 and c6, bishop a4. And, and both bishop and knight will will reroute. Yeah. But for example, here black should try bishop f5, and uh, he actually gets that diagonal first. So if the bishop returns to c2 at some point, mm. then uh, it'll be swapped off. Right. And meanwhile, yeah. the knight will reroute a6, c7 to e6 probably. Yes. So so I think knight e2 is uh, yeah is inaccurate there. Okay. And yeah, he should play uh, c3 first. So taking away this b4 square from the knight. Yeah, and now bishop d6 is a good uh, good move. And now um, 
if uh, knight e2, well, if knight f3, again, bishop g4, yeah, and black is uh, nice and active. Yes. So frequently white plays knight e2 instead. In fact, isn't there a plan of casting queenside in this position? Say, why can you almost be tempted to castle queenside with black? Absolutely, yes. So you played knight e7 now or queen d7. So you don't have to commit here. Um, so say like this, you can you just bring this back here. Yep. Well, h3 could be weakening if f6 yeah. and g5 comes. Yeah. So this could be. But, so you try and play aggressively. Yeah. Of course, white can play with b4, etc. So yeah. it can be double edge. Double edge, yes. It's not swings around the belts there. Okay. But knight e2 is. Uh, so knight e2 to avoid that pin altogether. And now black has another aggressive move, which is. Uh, Queen h4. Whoa! Because the weakness of that mo not playing knight f3 is the h4 square. Seems a bit nitpicky this move, queen h4. But yeah, and, and, and here, well, watch, definitely shouldn't castle, that's not a good move. <laughs> yes, <laughs> get mated on h2, okay. So, um, uh, generally, uh, also queen h4 stops uh, bishop f4, which was. Oh, uh, yes, which would be a nice strategic exchange to get rid of this. Which is what I was playing. So now knight d2. Is played and now black can play bishop g4. All oh, right, just in time to avoid knight f3. And you know, black black's having uh, having lots of fun here. Yeah. But, but, but probably a better move actually than uh, knight d2 is uh, knight g3. Right. Ah. When I, I don't think black should take that. No, it's giving too much pressure on the f file. Yeah, yeah but, uh, I know the uh, f pawn's uh, forced. Uh, it's rather ugly, but open E and F files. Yeah, uh, two bishops. Yeah. Okay. So so knight so knight uh, G three, and uh, I think uh, the move here is uh, well you, you can you can play very You can just play knight F six if you want, or you can play a knight to E seven to stop knight F five, knight C E seven probably. Knight C E seven. Yeah, I think. Right, it's not this, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's you know, tending towards equality, but you know, there's, there's dynamic chances there for, uh, for both players. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, going back to position after c3, bishop d6. Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, and that part, after knight f3, uh, uh, bishop g4, th this is. Possibly a, a, a gambit, one that shouldn't really be taken. White, I think White can play Queen B3 and try and grab a pawn here. Ah, but I think that's not uh, not to be recommended. I, I, I think Black can play uh, maybe uh, just Knight E7. Couldn't he just double the pawns first? Oh no, Queen B7 is that dangerous? Uh, no, it's not dangerous. You just play Knight E7. I mean, but you can play Knight E7 here. Oh yes, that's right. and. and if queen takes, uh, yes, it looks too greedy. B seven, maybe uh, just castle here. We're just taking on a free first. Well, I mean, you, you can leave that for the moment, can't you? And well, what does White do? If he castles, then his pawns will be doubled in front of his king. It's horrible. You don't want to do that. Yeah. If the bishop on c one moves, then rook b eight and b two will drop. Yes. So it's it's. Uh, yes, that's not that's too materialistic for White. Yeah. <laughs> That I wouldn't recommend uh, no. doing that. Okay, so now I've, I've mentioned uh, that, um, uh, another possibility, possibly one of my better moves instead of knight f3 mm. is a queen f3. Ah. Okay, there's, there's, a, there's a, a tactical line here um, knight f6, but bishop g5. Bishop G5. One. Sorry, Bishop G5, yes. And now I believe Black can actually play uh, Bishop G4 here. Oh. Which which is uh, rather uh, complicated. Bishop takes uh, F6, now we take on F3, uh, take on D8, now Bishop takes G2. And, and this uh, should be good for Black. It's a Bishop H4. Like Bishop H4. And now you, you take the rook. Now you have to play f3, otherwise the bishop's going to get out. And now you can take on uh, h2. Yes. And it's it, awesome, it? Well, I mean, I think, I think White's actually going to round up that uh, bishop on h1. But he's going to get another pawn for it. So he's going to have uh, 
three pawns and a rook for uh, two pieces, which but, is a, which, which is a good deal. But how if this knight moves, bishop takes half free? That looks terrible. Um, I, th I think uh, I, th I think there is a way that uh, I can't remember it. But mm. I, th I think I think White White did have a way to actually uh, trap the bishop, but I've forgotten it at the moment. Okay. Okay. But, but that 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 line is generally uh, yeah that looks terrible. So bishop g four is pliable here. And 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 so so what else? So bishop takes uh, f six. I mean, what, what else can you do? So bishop takes f three, and so white's uh, in some trouble there. Yeah. So so that's uh, that's also a fine uh, for mm. black. Yeah. Okay. Right, let, let, let's try uh, other sides. Or, or, or move forward. White can play uh, bishop f4. It's, it's not very, uh, not played very often. Ah, so bishop f4. On, on move four. Okay, so bishop d3. Instead of bishop d3. Bishop d3. Bishop f4. Yeah, White just gets that diagonal uh, immediately. So. This is rather an annoying move. I'm not sure what great things Black can do against it. Ah. He could play c5, but then White could just go for a mass swap off, taking on b8 to start with, then playing bishop b5 check. Oh, this is dull. Yeah, it is, isn't it? The bishop d7. Oh, dear, oh dear. Takes, takes. Queen takes. And now maybe he can even take on c5 or play, play knight f3. Try and try and get a slight oh, yeah. edge. Yeah, black not having the two bishops or. Uh, yeah, I've seen these waste of the day games, these federate games. Yeah, someone with black was trying to play chess that day, and someone with white just plays the exchange French. I think I remember another move game recently. Right. This junior just drew very easily. It seems exchange French, and a lot of French defence players are put off when that happens. Yeah. Well, well, well so yeah. you, you, don't, you don't want to play c five, but it's difficult to actually uh, <laughs> come up with alternatives on a bishop f four. Yeah, so this is this is a bit of a, a danger for high rate players against low rate players, isn't it? I, 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 I think bishop f four is maybe a quite a good uh, quite a good drawing try. Mm. Uh, and, and another you know good move for black is bishop d six, but again. Well, it's not going to looks a bit like a London system as well. Horrible bishop f4 like a London system. Yes, so so <laughs> bishop, bishop d6 maybe. Takes. Queen takes. Now we'll probably be forced to threaten, so probably just play c3 here. Yes. And uh, Black's got a lot of work to do if he wants to beat his uh, his weaker opponent. Yes. So I think, I think bishop f4 is uh, a solid... Uh, Solid uh, drawing attempt. Yes, it looks pretty solid compared to. Pro pro probably, if, if if Black wants to uh, play through, we should probably just keep the pieces on. Just play Knight F6, Bishop E7, and Castle, and try and uh, grind White down later on. You know, keep the pieces on the board and uh, try and keep some tension. I think I've in Blitz though I've I've cr done something crazy, uh, which isn't recommendable. I'd try and finish out this Bishop just to get. Different uh, differences in bishop g7, knight g7. I'm not sure how good that is. White well, might just try and swap this off later. It might not be that hot. Uh, it's, it's, it's not very good. I wouldn't recommend against bishop f4 either. Mm. And maybe maybe slightly better against say bishop d3. Right. But bishop f4 seems kind of tailor made. Oh, oh yes, because it's going to yeah. waiting for g6. Yes, yeah, so you know, change off here yeah. and the e5 square. Yeah, but sometimes they don't play that plan, and then it might be quite good fun to have pressure on. D four this bishop. The, the other problem is after G six you can't really, well you can play bishop G four, but what's always going to be able to play H three, and you can't retreat to H five. It's more of a psychological move to, to play something unexpected, you know, to try and uh, make it more complicated. But it's, I'm only saying it's a blitz move. Yeah, as, as an idea. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's, it's different, isn't it? It's unusual to fianchetta your bishop, mm, but yeah. you know, it's probably not objectively particularly mm. correct. I wouldn't play against bishop F four either. Okay. Okay. I mean, we we can uh, briefly mention uh, four bishop e three. Bishop, bishop e three. Not really much to say about it. This this is what uh, Jack Mises. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Mises, Mies. I don't know. Used to play uh, 
in during his very lengthy career from the eighteen eighties uh, to the nineteen forties. Yeah, but uh, can't be that bad. But just getting his pieces out, defending the deep horn. But I mean, Black can just play Knight F six, Bishop D six, whatever he likes. Yes, it's not a, a particularly great move. But I thought I'd just uh, mention that as it was probably with a strong player. Yes. Dull, insipid stuff. Well, he, <laughs> Everything he wants us to know about dull, insipid stuff, the exchange I mean, he, he, <laughs> he, he was an aggressive player, and actually, it's interesting. You, you say this is dull, insipid, but yeah. um, Blackburn, you know, is one of the most fierce attacking players of all time. Yeah. That she always played E takes D5, because, you know, he wanted to open the game. He liked dynamic play. But so he, it's, he didn't understand Paul Strach. Yes, Paul but, but, yeah. but he thought, you know, E5 was all this was stodge. But, he didn't want stodge, he wanted to open, blast open all the lines. Yeah. So he just, you know, it opened just shows, up the game. Because there was no opening theory, he didn't know all the excitement you get from other lines. Well, there, there, there was some <laughs> opening theory, but it's just interesting, <laughs> you know, how, how perceptions have changed. He played e takes d5, you know, as the most aggressive move. It's because they didn't have any stem games to work with, they didn't have any opening theory. That's they did have some. <laughs> Morphy played the French, didn't he? Okay. Well, there, there, there were quite a few games with the block structure, and Philidor okay. had. A, okay. But, but Blackburn, you know, went against that, said, no, no, let's open up the position. And he had good results, didn't he? He did, you know, because he was a stronger player than most of his opponents. Okay. But, you know, Blackburn uh, used to like to open the uh, okay. game as much as possible. Right. Okay, but now we're going to actually look at what I actually think is White's best uh, move, which is a uh, 4 knight f3. Actually, Blackburn's nicknamed Black Death or something, isn't he? Uh, is yes. <laughs> okay. He had several nicknames, I think. Right. Black Death, yes. Uh, knight, knight f3. Um, this, this, this is a, quite an interesting move. Um, and Kasparov has also uh, tried this. And th the thing about, about this move is uh, this is actually quite tricky. But Black's most obvious reply is uh, Bishop G4. And there was a game in which he short played this against Kasparov. And now Kasparov found a very nice way to uh, to an edge for white. It was a very precise uh, move sequence. So the first we played H3. Yeah, it's obviously all prepared at home, and now bishop takes knight. Well, obviously, we'll just give white the two bishops, and that's good for white. Yeah. So uh, bishop h5, and now he played uh, queen e2 check. Have you seen this? This is quite interesting. Okay. And is it probing this? Yeah. Well, th th that's one of the ideas. One of the main ideas is if say bishop e7, then Kasparov will just steal a pawn with uh, queen b5. Yes. And there's not enough compensation. Yes. So short was actually forced to play. Uh, Queen e7. Yes. And, and now um, Kasparov came with the next part of it. It was to play. He doesn't want to swap queens at all. He actually played bishop e3. Right. And uh, see, we want this clever idea coming up uh, soon. Black played uh, knight c6. Uh, white played uh, knight c3. Yeah. Black castled uh, queenside. And n now the whole point is really having a. Uh, Forced, uh, having blocked in his own bishop with queen e2, and forcing black to do the same thing. Uh, Kasparov now plays g4. Yes. We're reading the whole clever, whole clever point of this, and now bishop g6 is forced. And now white's bishop is free to come to g2, whereas black's uh, bishop on f8 is blocked in. Oh, yes, by the queen. I mean, this is the whole, whole point of the, of the clever uh, clever idea. So white actually gains a couple of, uh, of tempi. Ah. Oh. Yes, that's interesting how... Oh, uh, yes, this bishop has done in really this bishop. There's no finchetto. I mean, but it's really quite a subtle idea. It's the whole h3, queen e2, bishop e3 idea. Just you know, to uh, make yeah. this bishop on, on f8 uh, temporarily a bad piece. By the way, Paul, finchetto is an acceptable pronunciation or pronunciation of uh, finchetto, isn't it? In UK, well, uh, well, I mean, the, I think Fianchetto is technically more correct, but everyone calls it Fianchetto, so... Yes, yes. So okay. I, I think it's... In the same way that uh, I think uh, Alakine is not really pronounced Alakine, but everybody calls him that. Yes. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's debatable, isn't it, really? Mm. Anyway, sorry. Uh, as, that was on the side. So, yeah, there's no Fianchetto here, and there isn't Fianchetto there, so what... So what what did um, Kasparov beat? Was this in a rapid game or in a long game then? I, I can't actually remember, but Kasparov won, ah. as far as I can remember. Okay. So, the, the, so, so that's, that's quite a nice idea. So after knight f3, uh, bishop g4 is probably uh, not such a great move. 
No. E- even though it's rather, it? it looks rather obvious and uh, Knight F3, G4. So what would you play against Knight F3 then? Well, uh, again, there is, there is uh, possibilities. Bishop D6 is uh, again a possibility, but now again, I think C4 is a good move. All right, trying to either threaten potentially C5s, but this pressure on D5 is annoying as well. Well, uh, again, we have the Bishop D6 versus yeah. C4, yeah. and you know, a couple of moves Black's going to wish his uh, bishop was on E7, mm. uh, as we've uh, seen before. So it's even though White's getting nice late queens, but it's just too much initiative there. If if taking that, it's just too much. So if he tries to keep solid with C6, well then just Knight C3. The pressure continues. Yes, I thought this is always pleasant for White. This kind of C4 business. I've tried it in Blitz myself as White. Uh, of course, but Black can try putting a, a knight on E7. I mean, um, this is uh, this is possible as well. Mm. But again, White, White has more space. White's going to be a little bit better here. Yeah. So you don't mind playing with the Ice 30 Queen's pawn here? No, no, no. I mean, it, this, is, this is one of the ideas of playing the exchange French for a win. Mm. You have to be prepared, I think, to uh, play Ice 30 Queen's pawn positions. Yeah. Uh, Kasparov certainly was uh, happy to do so. Yeah, I think, yeah, he, he inspired a lot of people to try this line, didn't he, with this C4 uh, later? Yeah, it became a popular, pop, more popular briefly. Mm. But then it's uh, phasing away again. I, I think Black started finding better moves than Bishop G4 and uh, and Bishop D6. So I think we'll go back to the position after Knight F3. Yeah. Poss possibly uh, Black's best move is the simple move uh, Knight F6. And now if White plays Bishop D3, I think again Black can play C5. Yeah, this is an interesting observation, Paul. This is a profound observation that the isolated queen's pawn might not matter here. There's, although I think if we were playing someone like Adams, he's an expert against isolated queen's pawns. I think he wouldn't mind this. No, but, but I, yeah. I, I think the bishop is always better placed uh, on the on e2 or e7 against the isolated uh, queen's pawn. Isn't it just a temporary inconvenience in some respect? Or well, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a tempo, so it might, does make a difference, doesn't it? Slight difference, but you know the structure though. Mm, structurally, no, there's, mean, there's just too much compensation. Well, I mean, it's, it's not just too much compensation, it's a game, isn't it? Yeah. But I, th I think it's certainly a viable way of uh, mm. of playing. Yeah. It creates some uh, dynamism. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, not have things, so... Yeah, so, so again, uh, I, th I think White's uh, best move here now is probably... Uh, Bishop G five. Bishop G five. And and now uh, again we're introducing the possibilities of Queen E two maybe. I mean, for example, if, if now uh, <laughs> this is, <laughs> it's funny how this Queen E two can be dangerous. Oh dear, I oh dear. So with Bishop E seven, can we not just play Bishop I, I, E seven? I think we can, we can play Bishop E seven. I think Bishop E seven is. <laughs> it looks sensible. Is 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 fine. But now I think uh, White can play Bishop D three. And uh, castles, and I think White has uh, some initiative here. I mean, is it ninety-five possible immediately? I don't know. Yes, oh, it, it looks oh, as though this could oh, be oh, um, maybe, maybe just castling, and even if castling, uh, if White castles, and that Bishop G four, it's quite possible we can just be rather aggressive and chase it. H three, Bishop H five, G four. Can we do this? Possible Bishop G six, Knight E five. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's double edged, but you, you know White has ways of of getting uh, aggressive uh, play against the uh, in the exchange French. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, oh, but, uh, another possibility I should mention after, after Bishop G five, uh, White plays after White plays Bishop G five. No, going back a couple of moves. Bishop G5. Uh, Black can try the the idea we mentioned uh, before with uh, Queen E7 check, trying to uh, oh, get the Queen B4 check. But this this is, this is more risky. Uh, Bishop E2. What if if Queen E2? What does Black play Bishop E6 or something? Um, well, I, the Black probably just swap, swap Queens. I think. All right. So Bishop E2. And now uh, Queen B4 check. Knight c3, queen takes b2, knight b5. 
Yeah, it looks a bit dangerous for Black to do this. Yeah, I, I think it, this is. I think this is a bit too uh, too risky. Yeah. Okay. So so again, so White has uh, aggressive uh, possibilities with this line. I think knight f three, knight bishop g five should give White some advantage. Yeah. Right. I think that's uh, that's basically it. On on the French exchange. Oh really? Oh, okay, excellent. Uh, I, I I pleaded with uh, Paul to should we cover like a different opening? But no, a different opening another week. He wanted to cover the exchange French but, today. But you suggested, <laughs> you suggested doing it a year ago, and people yeah. people pleaded for it. But some, for some reason, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I just think it's a psychological weapon of choice, isn't it? Or is it just a way of drawing? Often people perceive it as a way of drawing, but you're saying it can be quite aggressive. Then. Well, it, it depends on White's intentions. I mean. White used to play it a lot against stronger players in order to, and still does, in order to uh, get a symmetrical pawn structure and maybe get a draw. But I think, I think I could be wrong. If you look on chessgames.com, White actually has a minus score with the exchange French, mm. so it doesn't entirely work. Obviously, Black generally was a higher rated player. Rated, yeah. But I think some French defence players, though, have unfortunately given up past the French defence. Pigot used to play apparently uh, French defence and he's changed to the Sicilian right. because you know it's a big risk if you've got a very high rating to play the French defence I think you've got to mix it up haven't you I mean I, I've won lots of games with the black side of the, the exchange and I've never actually lost as far as I can remember oh, right. but most players I mean in fact probably very few have actually been trying to play aggressively uh, you know going directly for the win mm. and when White does that it actually becomes a uh, more interesting. Mm. Okay, I hope, hope that's, that was a useful video and we'll be looking at other openings maybe in, in the future weeks. Okay, um, comments or questions on YouTube and thanks very much to my guest, Paul Georgiou. Okay, thank you, Drift. Thanks very much.